Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and I got a tweet the other day from Ricky Nicholas across the pond in the UK, and he was very curious to see how the Seagate Central network attached storage device compares to the WD MyCloud that we have talked about ad nauseum here on the channel. So, Ricky, you asked and I have delivered. And by the way, Ricky's got a YouTube channel. You can check it out in the comments section below. Uh, this is it here. This is the Seagate Central. It is very, very similar, at least on the surface, to the WD MyCloud in that it can, cannot connect to your computer directly. It is an external hard drive. This is the two terabyte model. Um, it has a Ethernet jack here, gigabit Ethernet. Uh, it will not connect to your computer directly, so you're going to have to plug it in to your wired network, and then your devices can connect to it. If you have a wireless uh, router in the house, it'll, they'll connect wirelessly, but the performance will be severely degraded, as all of these network-attached storage devices tend to be on wireless. Uh, there's also a USB port on board uh, to connect an external hard drive. So like the WD MyCloud, you can attach additional drives and access them uh, over the network pretty seamlessly. And of course, your power adapter. It's pretty attractive as a, as a hardware design. It, uh, it's kind of designed to sit in your home theater. So it's got a nice uh, grill on the top here. It's vented. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So I like the way it looks. The way it functions, eh, maybe not so good. So we're going to go through um, all of this stuff. We're going to look at just about everything we did on the MyCloud and see how it functions on uh, the Seagate Central. And I, I, you know, it's okay. And there's some areas where it might be a little bit better, but there's other areas, especially in functionality, uh, that it's not. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull up our computer screen here and check out how it interfaces with your network. So when you plug it in, which I've done, uh, it pops up on your network like any other network attached storage device would. So as you can see down here, we got the MyCloud, the Seagate Central pops up much the same way. Now I have logged into my account on here. If I was logged out, uh, I would see the public folder and the USB one share in here, not the backup uh, or my personal folder. Every user gets a personal folder, but there's no way to create additional uh, folders for, um, you know, kind of restricted folders like you can do on the MyCloud. So in the MyCloud, I could create a folder and then decide what users can have access to it. If I wanted to just restrict it to two different users, I could do that. On this, the only private folders are limited to the user directly. So I have a folder, my wife has a folder, um, our infant daughter can get a folder, but none of us can see each other's folders. I guess there's ways to maybe share them together or something, but it, it doesn't, it's not very intuitive. Um, and it's kind of restrictive. And I can't actually, as an administrator of the drive, the owner, the guy that paid for it, I can't see what other people's folders are on my drive. So if you're in a family where you want to kind of monitor what your kids are doing, uh, this is probably not the right product because uh, you cannot gain access to their folders for anything. I mean, I guess you could probably take the drive apart and do it, but um, that's about it. Now, just like the MyCloud, the public folder is public from the get-go, and that's kind of its default position. Uh, and you'll see when we talk about the app in a minute, it also puts all of your uh, your phone uploads into the public folder for everybody to see. Now, when I say public, it's public within your network. So if somebody's connecting over the internet to it, which you can do, they're not going to see this without a password. But if somebody were to come onto your local wireless network, uh, this drive would be accessible just like you saw there. Without a password, they can get into that public folder and start mucking around in there. So you want to be a little careful about what you put in there because it will be readily accessible to anyone who has access to your network. And that's a, a thing that MyCloud does as well. Uh, and you want to be aware of that. If you have an external drive plugged in, as you can see here, we're going to click on that and we have access to it. The WD MyCloud has a USB 3 interface for these drives. Uh, this one is only USB 2, so it's a little bit slower for external drive access. Here is the control panel. And one of the neat things they do is they give you access to a neat little uh, shortcut that it creates when the drive boots up to let you know what the IP address is. So when you click on this little URL shortcut, it'll automatically take you over to the control panel, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, you get your recent activity. Um, there, there isn't much you can do on this. So I don't know why they need to have this recent activity thing. Like you can't remember the two things that you can actually do on it. But uh, you can add users and you can update the software. And, and that's those are the things that I've done for the most part. There isn't much to this. And that's one of the things I was disappointed about is that there's not a lot that you can configure. Um, you can't even cr you know create file shares. They're really restricted to the users specifically. So as you can see here, I created three uh, users on my account. I can add more if I wanted to. Uh, you give them a username, a password, and an email address. It'll then email that user. They can confirm that uh, and that will link them into the remote access capabilities as well. So they're able to get uh, to your drive on the local network just by logging in through the, uh, the native Windows or Mac file system or even Linux for that matter. Uh, but when they're away, they can uh, log in through uh, this tap-in uh, network, which is something Seagate's partnered up with and they will allow you to uh, get in remotely. However, they only allow you to have five users on at a time. And if you want more, and I'll show you this in a minute, you got to pay for it. So 
Um, that was a bit of a disappointment that you have some restrictions as to how many people can log in. Uh, there are social accounts on here as well, so you can, you can back up your Facebook account. Uh, so everything you post on Facebook, the drive can go find uh, and download and put it on there. So that's kind of a neat backup feature. Uh, it also works with Time Machine on the Mac. So if you have a, a Mac and you configure Time Machine, it will find the drive automatically and do its Time Machine backup to it uh, per user on your user account. Uh, this is actually very similar to how the WD My Cloud works as well. It also has uh, time machine capability. Uh, there are some services that it provides, and it looks like there might be room for more just based on how they design this. So maybe over time we'll see more things added. But uh, you have remote access, so this will determine whether or not you want to give uh, apps and the web portal access to the drive remotely off the network. So you could turn that off and kind of shut it down so nobody can get into your drive unless they're actually on your local network. I think Seagate makes some of these uh, set-top boxes, so this is a uh, media sharing app with that. Uh, DLNA, which is the uh, standard for interfacing with smart televisions, and as you uh, saw in the WD MyCloud, it also had the same feature, and I did do a test upstairs on my smart TV. I was able to pull up uh, some of the sample movies that come included on the drive, and that worked just fine. I'd also like the WD MyCloud has an iTunes service as well. Um, again, this will not, just like the WD MyCloud, it will not sync up or, or whatever to an iOS device. That means no Apple TV, no iPhone, and no iPad. It will uh, work with iTunes running on the Mac or Windows, but uh, it won't allow you to share with uh, the iOS devices directly. If you jailbreak it and you can do a whole bunch of stuff, maybe you could do it, but uh, you can't do it out of the box. So that iTunes server is just for uh, the desktop versions of iTunes there. So that is that. Uh, the setup screen is again pretty basic, just like everything else here. It uh, has uh, a couple of system options for shutting things down. Uh, there's also some advanced settings just to get the LAN settings. You can get an idea as to whether or not your hard drive is in good shape and uh, there's a USB manager to let you know that the drive is connected. We can of course eject that right now and it'll pop out. Now one thing that I liked about the WD MyCloud was that it allowed you to back up the drive itself. The, the MyCloud you could back up to the external drive. This doesn't let you do that. So you know you can back up to this, but if you want to back up the backup, or at least back up the photos that uh, you've stored on here, or other things that you want to protect, um, you have to do it manually. There's no built-in interface for backing up. And that was a pretty big omission, on, in, my, uh, in my opinion, because the, one of the things that was great about the WD MyCloud is that you could just take the contents of the drive, dump it to an external drive, automatic, well, not automatically, but through an interface that made it very simple. Uh, this one doesn't provide that functionality, so it's a little bit more difficult to use. So um, that is the basic web interface. We're going to take a look now at the app, and the app is pretty bad, actually. So we're going to pull up my phone here, and while we're talking, I'm going to uh, pop it up in a window on the screen at the same time. So let me just find my remote drive folder here. We'll pull up our, our magic window, and we'll go over to the Seagate uh, MyCloud drive, or the Seagate Central app, I should say, and we'll let it pull up here. It is really slow. It's, uh, it hasn't been optimized for iOS 7 yet. And one of the things that I also noticed with it is that, you know, it does connect up to your drive very quickly, but if I wanted to go into my phone and transfer um, photos into the uh, MyCloud, it's actually very slow. So if I go to the camera roll here, which I have a ton of photos in, as most of us do, I just tapped on it. I want you to see how long it takes for it to pull up that entire menu here. I did tap on it, and we're just going to sit here and wait. Let's see what happens. And maybe I could play some Jeopardy music or something if they don't kick me off of YouTube. And, you know, all of us have huge camera rolls. And you see how long it took to get in there. So um, here we are. If I wanted to take a, a photo and transfer it over, I can hit this little checkbox thing up there. I can tap on these two things. And then I can go over here. And thank you, Tony Chacon, for subscribing to me. I get emails every time one of you subscribes, so thank you for doing that. And if I hit upload, uh, it will then send those files to the drive, and I'll be able to access them. This app will work anywhere, so if I'm away from home or something like that, I can uh, be, be able to gain access to uh, my, my documents and, and photos and whatnot uh, remotely over that. And if I go over to my computer, uh, we can then see that uh, the um, files arrived, hopefully, in the, the spot. The problem, again, is that it's sticking all this stuff in the public folder. I can't put it in my private folder, which was uh, kind of a disappointment to me. But uh, there you go. You can see that we have those files there. Now, if you want to take a document that you downloaded on the web and put it over to your drive, you can do that. So let's say you're out and about somewhere and somebody emails you a PDF and you want to send that 
file back to your office or your house or something like that, uh, what you can do is uh, pull up the open in uh, option on your iPhone. And as you can see here, this will give me a list of all the things that my phone can open. Uh, and I'm going to go over here to the Seagate Media app. That's the app they want you to use. And what it'll do is it'll copy it over to the app. And then we can repeat the process we did for that photo a minute ago. Uh, hit the button there, hit the share icon and it will upload that file to the drive. And it'll do that uh, wherever I am, which is pretty handy. Now, one thing it won't do is work with the desktop. So on, on the, uh, the WD My Cloud, you have access to a desktop application that you can use to access the drive when you're not on your local network. Uh, this drive doesn't have that available for the desktop. What they do have uh, is something called uh, the, the tap-in network thing that we talked about here. So I'm just gonna log in again real quick. Looks like, looks like it. Uh, log me out and uh, when we pop in we can get access to the drive over the web but we lose a lot of that syncing and some of the neat stuff that the WD desktop app did but you can get at your files so if we go here to the public folder um, you can see that we have um, pretty much access to everything that we put up before so there's our phone directory and I can go into the documents folder and there's those two PDFs we looked at before. Um, but again, you can't use the app like you can on the WD My Cloud. And one of the things that I liked on the WD My Cloud was that uh, you could open up a file through the WD app on the desktop, edit that file, save it, and then it would re-upload it to the drive. It had a kind of a neat syncing feature. It wasn't as elegant as maybe Dropbox was, but it was certainly usable. Uh, this won't do that. So you have to download the document, edit it, and then re-upload it through that web interface because uh, there is zero for desktop applications on this uh, at all. And the other thing that concerned me is that there are a limit to how many external users it will allow. So there's a total of five that it allows as part of the product. If you want more than that, you have to buy the seat. And of course, they can conveniently take a credit card here. Um, and you've got to pay a $9.99 uh, $9 per seat per year in order to get more people in there. So uh, if you have a bunch of people that you want to have access to it over, over time, this may not be uh, the product for you. So what about the speed of the drive? So we did a, a benchmark test on the WD My Cloud before. We're going to run that same exact test on uh, this drive. And the Seagate Central actually is a lot faster in both reads and writes. Uh, the WD My Cloud, when I tested it, was about 26 or 28 megabytes in write speed per second. Uh, this one does 43, as you see here. It kind of fluctuates a little bit, but uh, it's in the 40 megabyte range easily. And we're getting huge read speeds here, over 100 megabytes per second right now as we're going. This is on a gigabit Ethernet switch. They're, both devices are on the same switch. This is one of those things where your mileage will always vary. But I ran this same exact test right on this chair with these same cables, same computer, same software, you name it. Uh, and the Seagate drive is faster. So if speed, write speeds in particular on your local network are important to you, uh, this one is probably the better of the two for that. Um, but that's the only area that I've seen where it actually uh, does better than the MyCloud. So which one wins out? That is the question. So I, I think without question, uh, the WD MyCloud has more features and certainly is more configurable than the Seagate drive. The only area where the Seagate Central does better is in transfer speed, and it is significantly faster on the same network. And I think if you're looking for high transfer rates, this is probably the better choice. However, from a standpoint of user access, backup ease, and a whole bunch of other things that we reviewed during the course of this video, uh, you saw the WD MyCloud does better uh, in those areas. So if functionality is important to you, then I think you need to go with the MyCloud. If you're looking at high speeds over your local area network without the need, to have the drive plugged into a computer 24 seven, uh, this one might be the better choice. Now what's interesting is that most of these gripes that I'm talking about are really limited to software and how Seagate's decided to configure the drive. So over time, we could see firmware updates uh, that raise the bar in how it interacts with the user. And that might be a good thing because if they added some of those MyCloud features that I like, the ones that it's lacking, uh, this might be a really good product. So we'll keep an eye on it and see how it develops over time. But uh, for now, I think the WD MyCloud is the better choice. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.